Do you go through Pinterest and admire all of the images but have no clue where to start your architectural site analysis? Today's video is a very exciting video because I will be explaining a few more topics for site analysis. My first site analysis video went really well and actually one of the best videos on the channel so have a look at that because that is more beginner level and this is additional things to analyze on an advanced level. So let me know if you want to see how I've done these diagrams in Photoshop because they're actually very easy. So today's video is explaining this site analysis poster so let's get started. Let's start with the diagrams on the left. Canal network. You obviously don't need to do this unless you have canals on your site. So you basically name the canals, locks, entrances, their levels, and where do they lead. So the text says the site is surrounded by canals from north, west, and south side. The new main line leads straight to Birmingham while the old main line leads to Wensbury and then the two lines join at Smithwick Junction. Open space network. It is important to analyze built, unbuilt, and green spaces together because without green spaces, unbuilt areas will be much larger and the ratio between spaces won't be clear. The site is connected to open spaces and parks through the canals, cycling routes, and spawn lane. The land is divided into 40% built, 10% green spaces on the southeast, and 50% unbuilt areas. Center edge. Here you are just naming the center heart or essence of the site, whatever you want to call it, and then if you have buildings on the edge of the site. And it's important that the center is close to public transport and it's higher than the edge building so that it creates active surveillance. Chance this building serves as the center of the site due to its height and location, being that it's within walking distance to public transport and provide active surveillance to the buildings on the edge of the site. Topography. This is where you analyze the slope of the site, if it has any, and there are sites online that can generate this for you, which I've mentioned in the best seven sites for architects video, but I have done the section myself. The site is predominantly flat while the main slopes are on the edge of the site towards the canals. The slope is 4 meters down, which gives the site boundaries. The site, however, has multiple layers regarding aqueducts, bridges, and the M5 motorway. Figure ground. This is where you analyze just built and unbuilt areas, and I should have added the canals too because it helps position the site even more. And if you were doing it in more details, then you could talk about the history and how the site or the city was developed to the way it is. And you also briefly talk about the type of buildings and their heights. So the area is predominantly built with residential buildings on the south, while the rest of the area is built with industrial buildings and retail. The site's major and highest buildings are towards Spawn Lane, while on the south of the site there's a line of buildings with homogeneous building heights towards Birmingham New Main Line. Landscape. This is where you analyze the green spaces in a wider context and then analyze the wildlife and habitats. It took me a while to find that information and what I did for the trees, because I couldn't find the specific types anywhere, I went on Google Earth or site images and took screenshots of the trees. The area has low percentage of open spaces and parks and in need of increasing and optimizing. There are a few major parks of the conservative areas on the north and south with a variety of animals and wildlife. Street pattern and hierarchy. This is also where you explain how the street patterns have developed and how do they look. So grid, curves, loops, etc. Hierarchy is explaining to which streets are more important and why. So the area has curvilinear street patterns originated from the canals that helps form the site. The M5 and the railway has hierarchy due to its location and connection to Birmingham. And then the other lanes have less hierarchy such as Spawn Lane because it has less traffic and it leads to residential area. Land use and density. You're explaining here building types around the site, so for example, industrial, commercial, residential, retail, educational, etc. So the area is dense with industrial buildings to the north of the site, heavily dense residential areas to the south. The area has a few mixed use buildings on the north and the west of the building. Ignore the last sentence because I didn't know what else to write and that is why that is there out of the blue. Next is a panorama of the site with just images that I've collaged 
but if I was smart enough, I would have remembered to just take a panorama shot when I was on site. Last but not least, a site section which is basically just the current site conditions. And you might say to yourself when you're doing yours is, wow, my site is so ugly, I have no canals or parks, and I have a motorway. But this is just the existence, so don't worry if your section isn't interesting, because in the end, you're there to design it and make it better. So let me know if you'd like to see any of these diagrams or the site section in Photoshop or Illustrator. And that is all for today's video and I hope you thought it was useful. This was actually a group project and this was my part of the poster, but there are more things to analyze if you can believe it. So let me know if you want part 3. Don't forget to give this video a like and share because it helps support the channel so I can create more videos like this one. I am Rasha Shiroro and I'll see you next time.